Oh, hey. I'm back. I'm Danny, and this is a Southern California Comics weekly video update. You know the score? I'm here to tell you about the latest in comical type of books, because they come out every week, and someone has to tell you about them. Because how else would you know? You're currently at a computer or at a phone. You're not at a store. So, hopefully, you'll look at these comics that I'm going to show you, come to the store, and buy some, because that's the whole point of this. I'm sorry if I'm breaking kayfabe there, but let's do this. Um, hot new Marvel Comics event of the year is called Secret War. S plural. Secret War is plural. And uh, that comes out in four months. <laughs> but um, Avengers number 40. Jonathan Hickman, Stefano Caselli sort of starts the road to Secret Wars. This is, this is where the plot starts machinating. Starts, things start popping off uh, to the war that is secret. I don't know, I did not read this and I don't have anything to say about it. I'm, I'm saving this so I can read the entire run whenever I get around to this issue. Currently reading the entire run. And then I'll get to this issue and then I'll tell you about what's in this issue in like, I don't know, six months. So look forward to that, but I'm probably going to forget. So, um... I, I'm not gonna lie, I look through this. I look through this to see what happens so I can tell you about it, and then what happens is something that I can't tell you about because it is a major spoiler, and it does not involve Thanos, surprisingly. So look forward to that. Check it out, Avengers number 40. Um, that's a comic in the middle of its run, and for the sake of segues, this is a comic at the end of its run. This is not a Where's Waldo. This is a cute little cover to the last issue of All New Ultimates, number 12. Uh, Michelle Fife, Amel Carpina, is I think the artist? Yes, yes, I got the name correct. This is the last issue in the 12-part story by the creator of The Amazing Copra, which hopefully you will read one day, because it's a great comic. Ultimate, also good. Teen street-level superheroes. I kind of wish these guys were going to be the Defenders on Netflix, but that's okay. Um, you got Miles Morales, you got uh, Black Widow, you got Kitty Pride, Cloak Dagger, someone named Bombshell. I read this comic, but I read the inside front cover so I can remember who everyone is. This is it's a good comic. It's fun. Art's pretty good. Weird colors. Street gangs. I think a lot of people were sleeping on this because no one really talked about it. But it's totally worth talking about and not sleeping on. Don't sleep. Read the Ultimates. Especially the last issue. All right. So, comics usually come out monthly, but sometimes this goes horribly awry, and then something doesn't come out for like six months. Um, speaking of which, Jupiter's Legacy is out. This is the fifth issue. Mark Miller, Frank Quitely. The fact that Frank Quitely drew it should tell you why it took like months to come out. Four ninety nine. Great comic, great art. Two period type stuff. This is Mark Miller on his good goodness. He is he is back to being a good writer again, because kind of tried to make fake movies in his comics, and that wasn't too good. Let me find you a good... Ah, yes, here's how great the art is. Here's a lady standing on boxes. Yeah, boxes, right? She's standing on them. It's a good comic. Oh, well, she uses her, her powers to, like, push the boxes with her mind, I bet. I read this comic, I don't remember what happened, but there are boxes in this one. There's boxes and a lady with a pink shirt. And a mustache. And... <laughs> Classic to Mark Miller's weird fetishes. Here is a, a giant person. He loves giant people. He loves giant people looking foolish. I don't know why, but it happens in this comic, just like every other Mark Miller superhero comic, so... Look forward to that. I'm excited. I like that book a lot, actually. Even though I just spent a couple minutes making fun of it. Funny how that works out. Alright, last two. Um, let's take this off planet. Let's take this into outer space. First with uh, Adventure Time, Marceline Gone Adrift. It's another six-issue miniseries. Hold on, I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop for a second and talk about this this cover for the regular show March Madness special. <laughs> Let's just look at it for a couple minutes. Man, that's amazing. That is a leprechaun shooting rainbow eye beams. What was I talking about? All oh, right, Adventure Time is a comic book based on a cartoon, and it is a good cartoon and a good comic book. This is Marceline Gone Adrift by Meredith Gran who did uh, Octopus Pie, great webcomic, and the Adventure Time Marceline and the Scream Queens comic, which is about the band. She forms a band. That was good. That was really good. This is uh, illustrated by Carrie Pish. 
this is basically uh, Marceline gets shot into space, like the Incredible Hulk. Good times. It'll be fun. The art's really nice. Like, this is some of the slicker art they've had. Like, it maintains the character models, but it looks really... Looks like it's kind of its own thing. It's the colors, I think. The colors and kind of looks like brushwork. Like, painted. Looks like painted colors, but probably isn't. Probably just nice digital art. This is good. This is cool. Yeah, I was thinking of not buying this. Even though I like Adventure Time. But I think I'm going to buy this. I'm going to buy this. I convinced myself, so you should pick it up, too. Anyway, last comic of the week. The new number one. There's always a new number one. It's The Star Wars, number one. You might be asking, what? Another Star Wars number one? Did they reboot the franchise? I don't know. Um, so Dark Horse lost the Star Wars license, and Marvel picked it up, which they originally had back in the 70s. Back when Star Wars was a thing nobody cared about. So now they got it back, and they're putting all their top-tier talent on it. This one, the, the regular Star Wars comic, has uh, Jason Aaron writing and uh, John Cassidy uh, drawing it. So it looks really nice. It looks, looks really slick. Let me find you a good page. Like, just a really nice-looking comic. Stormtroopers, Han Solo. Really slick art. Really slick art that... Does the, does the comic book storytelling thing, but also gets the, the character designs correct? Or the character models, or whatever? I guess it, the actors look like the actors, is what I'm getting at. And it doesn't look stiff, and these things often look kind of stiff when they do that, but this looks good. Look, Darth Vader's in it. It's got Chewbacca, the Space Yeti. Um, Han Solo, he played, a, he played Indiana Jones, if you'll recall. It's got, it's got a Luke Skywalker. It's... Just classic, classic post-1977 Star Wars. No newfangled craziness, just, hey, read some Star Wars stuff that you remember from the first movie. Great. Awesome. It looks good. We got more coming out. I will say, this, this first issue is $5, but it's a thick, it's a thick first issue. It's, it's got to be like 30, 40 pages? It's probably like 30 pages of actual story stuff. Like, they're really going all out. They got... It's got a preview of the Star Wars Darth Vader series by uh, Kieran Gillen and someone else. I think Salvador LaRocca. Yes. Looks good. I'm tempted to pick it up. But you probably should. We have a ton of copies. We have a bunch of variant covers. Got all the Star Wars you can handle. And probably more than you can handle. That's a challenge. Come here and buy as much Star Wars as possible. Alright? Cool. In the meantime, I'm going to do a second segment. So, if you're okay with that, I'm okay with that. Is that okay? Too bad. Hey, hey kid, I heard you like Star Wars. Well, they got a new Star Wars out. It's number one, it's Marvel Comics. They're back, Star Wars. It's a movie about a space samurai who has a laser sword and there's like a drunk guy with a gun. I don't know, it's cool, but... So, Dark Horse used to make Star Wars comics. And I'm going to tell you about some of those, because you have a bunch of them, and I want to... I, I like Star Wars. It's a good movie. Great franchise. A little sick of it. But, I don't know, I got excited again after the movies. But only for the movies. Um, what? What are we talking about? Oh, yeah, so, most recent thing from uh, Dark Horse that pretty easy to get into, uh, it's called Star Wars. So this is Volume 1, In the Shadow of Yavin, which may be a little too serious for something fun like Star Wars. This is uh, Brian Wood and Carlos Donda. This is uh, in the vein of the Marvel Star Wars that we were just talking about. It's what takes place after, in those couple years between uh, Star Wars 1 and Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. That's right, I called it Star Wars 1. I'm always going to do that. It's uh, pretty accessible if you want a modern Star Wars comic that isn't Star Wars number 1 for Marvel Comics. We have a lot of copies. Please buy it. Uh... So there's that, yeah, cool. There's a lot of classic stuff. Because, okay, Dark Horse has been publishing Star Wars stuff for like 30 years. Like, since at least the late 80s, early 90s? Mid to late? I don't know. I don't, I don't know how years work, but uh, got a lot of stuff. If you want the classics, they got the Star Wars Omnibus. We have a bunch of copies of these. These include uh, some of the classic Dark Horse material. And if you go with the long time ago volumes. These are the Marvel editions, the early Marvel comics, because Marvel had a Star Wars ongoing series. I went for like a hundred issues or so. 
I don't remember the number. Not gonna look it up. Don't care that much. But this is starting with number Star Wars number one for Marvel goes to I don't know. But there's a lot of it. Old 70s, 80s comics. Cool looking stuff. Some classic artists. Carmen Carmine Infantino worked on this. I know the uh, original issues are by like Howard Chaikin. Howard Chaikin on Star Wars. That's nuts. Is it good? Oh, and also, you might be thinking it's black and white, but nah, bro. Full color, dude. I don't know why I sound like a surfer, but there we go. Star Wars. Classic. Is this called Vader's Quest? I just saw this. It's the one where Vader goes on a quest. I think this is the one where he gets all the infinity gems. But don't quote me on that. It's drawn by Dave Gibbons. Yo, Dave Gibbons. Dave Gibbons, Darth Vader. Kind of dope. A little off-model, but I like it like that. I like off-model. It's got blindfolds. It's got enter, editor, Emperor Palpatine, Senator, whatever, man. Maybe you like the video games? Uh, classic. Uh, I keep saying the word classic, but it's not all classic. People love Knights of the Old Republic. I think it's a good game. Never played through the whole thing, but Star Wars made a bunch of comics about them through Dark Horse. So if you want to take place... If you want to read some comics that take place before there was a Luke Skywalker, it's pretty cool. Really diverse cast. Lots of different people with like stuff that hangs off their heads like this, but it's like skin. I don't know much about these. I'm sorry, but it's cool. Um, it's got rocks and space and spacesuits. Spacesuits in Star Wars, you don't see that too often, I don't think. So, yeah. Check out the game. Well, might want to read the comics. Um, all right, now we're getting into the the actual classic Dark Horse material. Um, first of all, one of the most one of the most popular ones, I think, one of the most famous ones, at least infamous. I don't know. Shadows of the Empire. They made a game. They made an audio drama. They made a book. This was sort of a multimedia Star War. This was like one of the most high-profile Star Wars expanded universe type things. Kind of cool. Who drew this? Who drew this, my friends? I will tell you. It's Killian Plunkett, written by John Wagner. John Wagner, creator of Judge Dredd. That's right. This feature is a... This is one with Dash Rendar in it. The uh, space cable, as we like to call him on the internet. Really nice art. There's a guy who looks like Lobo in it as well. Sort of a sort of a space biker. Look at him. That, yo, that's totally Lobo, by the way. This is Lobo palette swap. Kind of cool. And uh, don't forget, Prince Jizor, famous from me seeing the toy at Walmart, Trials of the Empire, a classic book in the Star Wars canon. And uh, this one's kind of cool. I always like these characters. It's called Crimson Empire. It's the, I had the toy of this, I don't remember what they're called. Imperial Guard. They don't seem like they guard very much, because they're always like, it looks like they're wearing gowns, but apparently when the gowns go backwards, or when they take, they're actually capes, and they got cool Mass Effect armor. This is this is probably one of the one of the classic ones for the hardcore fans. It's a it's drawn by Paul Galassi. He used to do like kung fu comics in the seventies. It's one of those one of those great all time needs more attention type dudes. Darth Vader is in all of these. Did you know that? Did you know that Darth Vader is in Star Wars comics? This is just like this is just like nice and pulpy looking. Clint Eastwood's in it. Cool looking book. I think this is, this is the one I'm probably most interested in now. But I'm going to leave it in the, at the shop just for you. That's all I'm saying. Did you know there's a Star Wars comic out? And it's we have a lot of copies. You should buy it. Star Wars, number one. Marvel Comics. Please buy it. It's $5. What are you going to spend $5 on? Exactly. Star Wars. Buy it. Marvel Comics. 